so let us uh, begin phase diagrams okay see until now i have given you only the introduction before starting phase diagram okay, whatever we discussed types of bonds or uh, so types of bonds or uh, solid solution types of solid solution solid solubility uh, alloys okay so compounds so all those things are just an introduction because we are going to start a very important topic phase diagrams okay we will understand it first i am not going to define the phase diagram because uh, if i define phase diagram you won't understand anything you will just uh, you just or even i won't define the phase also okay if i define the phase you won't understand it you will just read the definition after explaining you one example if i give you the definition you will able to understand it okay right so let me start with a copper nickel alloy or a copper nickel system okay copper nickel alloy or copper nickel system okay so this is a substitutional solid solution okay copper in nickel copper will be substituted in place of nickel i was saying about that uh, in the previous videos also okay so we already know what is mean by substitutional solid solution okay right see if i am not mixing it now now as of now i am not alloying it i am taking copper separately nickel separately if i take copper separately it's a uh, it's a cubic close pack ccp means cubic close pack it is a crystal structure and nickel is also cubic close pack so the hume ruthery hume ruthery rule has to be satisfied right one one rule the crystal structure has to be same now ccp copper its melting point okay of the copper was 1085 degrees celsius in generally and nickel's melting point was 15 or 1453 degrees celsius pure pure nickel pure nickel's melting point is this pure copper's melting point is 1085 first i am plotting that okay you could see i am taking pure copper 100 percentage copper okay 100 percentage copper 100 percentage copper if i take 100 percentage copper until it reaches its melting point just consider that i'm keep on increasing my temperature until it reaches melting point it will remain as a solid okay so that is until it reaches 1085 degrees celsius it will remain as a solid once it reaches melting point the solid will just start converting into liquid it is phase change process happens but understand this carefully it's a pure metal okay copper pure it's not alloy so for a pure metal if i add heat okay which means if i keep on increasing uh, if i keep on supplying heat in its melting point temperature won't uh, increase it will remain same temperature will remain same only the la the heat which i'm supplying is nothing but latent heat which means the heat used for converting from solid to liquid these are the things which we discussed in thermodynamics i hope you remember okay when it comes to metals okay what i'm doing initially let us consider 30 degree celsius from 30 degree celsius i'm keep on supplying heat temperature will keep on increases okay temperature will keep on increases molecular activity will be keep on increasing once you reach melting point okay temperature won't increase but solid will get converted into liquid phase change process will happen so the heat which i am supplying during that time is nothing but latent heat the heat which i am supplying here where the temperature is increasing that is nothing but specific heat uh, sorry that is nothing but sensible heat we have already discussed about what is sensible heat what is latent heat in thermodynamics itself okay right now so once it reaches melting point i will be continuously supplying heat but its temperature won't increase only phase will change from solid to liquid okay once after it get changed to liquid if i further supply heat it it will again okay its temperature will again increase but it's complete it will be completely in terms of liquid state so at melting point okay at melting point it will be mixture of solid plus liquid okay at this particular point will be mixture of solid plus liquid there won't be any change in the temperature when the when both liquid and solid exist in equilibrium there won't be any change in the temperature okay coming to nickel again now i'm taking nickel as usual from 30 degree celsius room temperature i'm heating it heating it heating it heating it so temperature is going to increase until it reaches its melting point that is 1453 okay so here in y axis i'm representing temperature okay at melting point liquid and solid will exist in equilibrium okay after that it will change to liquid okay but when when the phase change was occurring temperature will never change okay that is the point you need to understand so these are this is pure copper that is pure nickel so here i am taking 100 percentage nickel okay 100 percentage nickel that has 100 percentage nickel pure nickel okay now listen to me carefully okay now listen to me carefully 
I am going to form copper nickel alloy, which means substitutional solid solution of copper in uh, copper in nickel. Okay, I am going to substitute copper in nickel. I am going to increase the percentage. For example, I am taking uh, nickel initially 100 percentage. I am adding copper. I am adding copper. I am adding copper. 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 Or you take copper. I am adding nickel. 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 Whatever. But I am forming an alloy which is a mixture of copper and nickel. The composition can be any type. Okay, the composition can be something like I will I will state you here. Okay, I'm going to take composition in x-axis. The composition can be something like uh, exactly at the center. If it is exactly at the center, it indicates 50 percentage of the nickel. It indicates 50 percentage of the nickel, 50 percentage of the copper. If I take somewhere here, if I take somewhere here, copper percentage will be more, nickel percentage will be less. 25 percentage of the nickel and 100 percentage of, sorry, 75 percentage of copper. If I take somewhere here, 75 percentage of nickel and 25 percentage of copper okay so if in this axis if in this axis if the point which i am taking if it is very close to nickel the percentage of nickel will be more if the point is very close to copper the percentage of copper will be more let me uh, write that, write write that also okay suppose if i take a point here uh, it is going to contain 25 percentage okay of nickel okay and it is containing 75 percentage of copper center point 50 percentage of nickel 50 percentage of copper this point okay some some point which is near to the 100 percentage nickel 75 percentage of nickel and 25 percentage of copper if i keep on moving and if i reach this point 100 percentage of nickel okay so that is how the composition is designed and i am going to take in x axis as i said already composition i am going to fix one unit I'm going to fix one unit. It is something like if I take this point, I can say 50 percentage nickel or 50 percentage copper. Uh, if if uh, if 50 percentage is nickel, automatically the balance 50 percentage will be copper. Okay. And similarly, if I say 25 percentage nickel, balance 75 percentage is copper. So it is convenient for us to mention with a single unit. Either you go with the nickel or you go with copper. What I'm going to do? I'm going to use weight percentage of nickel. Okay. I am going to take x axis as composition in terms of nickel. If I say 20 percentage nickel, automatically 20 percentage, 20 uh, weight percentage of nickel, automatically it indicates balance 80 was copper. If I say 75 weight percentage of nickel, automatic, automatically it indicates 25 percentage balance is copper. Okay, fine. And x axis I am going to take temperature in degree Celsius. Okay, right now, if I am mixing it, Okay, suppose let us consider I am taking an alloy, I am taking a solid solution which is having 50 percentage nickel and 50 percentage copper. What will happen to the melting point of that alloy? We know melting point of copper is uh, lesser than that of melting point of nickel. This is 1085, that is 104, sorry, 1453. So, what will happen to this nickel, uh, nickel copper alloy which is having 50 percentage weight in terms of nickel and 50 percentage weight in terms of copper? That is my question. We will do one thing. Let us consider I don't know what it is. So I will draw a I will draw a linear line. Okay, a line which is connecting uh, the melting point of copper and the melting point of nickel. And similarly, similarly, this. So what will be our expectation? Our expectation is whatever the temperature here. Let me take the temperature to be uh, uh, just T. Okay, let it be T. Okay, let it be T. So our expectation will be this t will be our melting point okay our expectation i'm saying t will be our melting point for nickel copper 50 percentage okay, that is our expectation or indirectly i can say since it is directly i can say since it is a linear line if i take a point exactly at 50 percentage this temperature will be nothing but the average of this two okay so if this is 1453 and if this is 1085 average of this two will be my temperature 1085 plus 1453 by 2 okay something 1 2 something okay 1000 uh, uh, 1200 something okay approximately 1200 okay degree celsius i don't know the exact value you calculate it okay you calculate it approximately 1200 that is our expectation what i was explaining here these are our expectations what i uh, if i take 50 percentage nickel and 50 percentage copper our expectation is that is our expected melting point of this nickel copper mixture is the average of melting uh, average of melting point of nickel and melting point of copper that is pure nickel and pure copper 
So I'm taking average value of that. This is our expectation, but reality is not that. If I do an experiment, that is from experiments, we identified if I take 50% nickel and 50% copper alloy solid solution, we identified that the temperature at which what actually I'm doing, I'm keep on increasing the temperature, I'm supplying heat and supplying heat at this by, by keeping 50% nickel and 50% copper, I'm supplying heat, temperature is increasing, 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 increasing. Our expectation is at this point, uh, it will it will start converting into liquid. After this point, it will remain liquid. That is our expectation. Am I right? Until this point, it will be solid. After this point, it will remain as liquid. That is our expectation. But reality, reality is completely different when it comes to when I do the experiment. What is happening? As I am supplying heat, we the liquid start appearing. Okay, that is solid is starting to convert to liquid at some point. At some point below this. Okay, we will take that to be TS. Okay, this is the starting point of formation of liquid. Okay, starting point of formation of liquid. Further, you supply heat. I'm supplying heat further. What generally will happen when it comes to pure pure alloys? That is not pure alloy, pure metals. If I keep on uh, uh, heating, if I keep on supplying heat until melting point, temperature will increase. But at melting point, temperature won't increase. Only phase change will occur. Uh, latent heat. After after completely complete phase change happens from solid to liquid, uh, after complete phase change happens from solid to liquid, the temperature will increase. But when the phase change was happening, no temperature will increase if it is a pure metal for copper or for nickel, whatever. But for an alloy of nickel copper, what is happening? We are heating the temperature. The first observation was we are we are heating the temperature is increasing at some temperature ts which is below the mean temperature okay, which is below the mean temperature okay liquid start appearing and as i further supply heat the temperature was increasing and uh, solid was getting converted into liquid also which means both phase change process and temperature increase both was happening uh, after reaching this point okay so this is the point at which First liquid, that is, uh, this is the point at which the conversion of solid to liquid started. As I am continuously supplying heat, the temperature is further increasing, 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 increasing. Solids are getting converted into liquid, 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 liquid at one point above this mean temperature. Okay, at one point above this mean temperature, let me take it as TL. All solid has converted into liquid. I hope you got it. Right. And if you further increase the heat, uh, like after this point everything is going to be liquid okay so what is the observation first observation let me repeat it first observation is we are getting the starting of uh, phase change is happening below the mean temperature so the the solid is starting to convert it into liquid below the mean temperature itself if i further supply heat temperature is increasing and also phase change happening that is a specific property of an alloy that is not happening for pure metals. So temperature is also increasing, phase change is also uh, happening until I reach this point. So which means if you take this line, okay, a line between TL and TS, okay, this line, uh, both solid and liquid exist in equilibrium, which means liquid is also there, solid is also there. If I keep on increasing temperature, solids are getting converted into liquid. So in this region, but pure metal, only it is a point because there is no change in temperature it is just a point but alloy we are getting a line okay for a fixed composition now repeat the experiment with the different compositions i will take 25 75 i will take 75 25 okay if i do that again if it is 25 70, 75 25 75 percent of nickel 25 percent of copper our expectation will be something like this our expectation will be something like this. We will expect this is to be the average value. But again, reality, we are getting TS below. We are getting TS below and TL above. Same, same logic. Okay, TS below and TL above. That is starting of uh, starting of phase change, end of phase change. Starting of liquid generation, all the liquids are converted. Okay, after this, only liquid exists. So in between this region, liquid plus uh, solid exists in equilibrium. Okay, now again, if I take some below, okay, our expectation, this will be the point at which uh, the, that is, that will be the mean, so that will be the melting point, that is our expectation, mean melting point, 
but the reality was again below in the bow okay so if i do for different points different composition 20 percent 30 percent 40 50 60 if i if i do for different uh, uh compositions ts point ts point means what the starting of uh, what is that starting of uh, liquid generation solid getting converted into liquid tl points are nothing but all solids have that is the phase change completely occurred okay after tl uh, it's completely in liquid state before TS, it is completely in liquid, it's completely in solid state. Between TL and TS, it is in equilibrium, liquid plus solid. So I will be getting a two, I will be getting two curves. Okay, one curve. So I am getting all the TL points lying in this curve and all the TS points lying in this curve. And this curve or this boundary is called as solidus boundary. Okay, solidus or simply solidus or solidus boundary. And this boundary is called as liquidus boundary. Why it is solid as boundary and why it is liquid as boundary? Because you take any point, you take any point in this region, the region between the solid as boundary and the liquid as boundary, it is going to exist as a combination or else first let me state this. See, if I take any point below this boundary, what I will get? If I take any point below this boundary, it's going to remain in solid state. Okay, it is going to remain in solid state. See, generally solids will be represented as s or alpha okay so or simply you can represent with s also there is nothing wrong okay i will represent this with s also there is nothing wrong or sometimes we will represent it with alpha alpha indicates solid phase okay solid phase or s indicates also solid phase above this liquidus boundary it's completely going to be in liquid phase and between this tl and ts that is liquidus boundary and solidus boundary it's going to exert it is going to exist in liquid plus solid in equilibrium you take any composition okay and if that lies between tl and ts that's going to exert that going to exist in t that going to exist in liquid plus solid okay so this is my phase diagram i hope you got it right so a diagram which is going to represent as different phases which can exist okay uh, when i form an alloy okay and uh, this is a solid phase okay liquid plus solid phase liquid phase at each and every composition and at a different temperature what is the phase we are going to get okay those are the things which the phase diagram is going to give us okay so i hope you got it okay a detailed idea but uh, it's not over okay i have just given you an introduction about uh, phase diagram there are a number of things to be discussed we'll discuss one by one uh, we will first understand what is the definition of phase, composition, etc. Then we will come back to this copper-nickel diagram again and we will discuss further. So now we will just define what is meant by this uh, phase diagram. Okay, A diagram in the space of a thermodynamics variable. So thermodynamic variables uh, in most of our cases, the examples which we are going to deal, we will have temperature and compositions only. But there are some other thermodynamic variables, right? pressure okay we can even take pressure also as a thermodynamic variable specific volume etc but what we are going to be concentrating on we are going to be concentrating on temperature and composition only and a diagram in space of the thermodynamic variable indicating phases in equilibrium so what are the different phases it exists in equilibrium solid liquid plus solid and liquid okay these are the different phases which i taken in this example okay so i hope you got it uh, now we will proceed and we will discuss what is mean by pace composition etc